four, five, six, one, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ha! <laughs> Would you stop sneaking up on me? <laughs> All right, what are we doing today? Well, anyway, a lot of you wrote in and you said, Jeff, I want to know how the heck you timber a small mine. Some of you are crazy enough to try it yourself. But you know what? I'm going to teach you everything you need to know. So that way you can be safe when you tunnel your own mine. I already pre-cut all my wood. I made a video on how to do that. Now, if you haven't seen that video, cut the timber for a small mine, I'm going to leave a link right about here, which is timbering a small mine, making the supports. I want you to click on it, watch it, and it'll give you a better understanding. And I even play a little guitar in there. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? You don't know what I'm gonna say, so come on, let's go! Look at all this lumber. <laughs> Good thing I got an ore cart down here. <laughs> A lumber cart. Woo wee. A lot of lumber, right? There. Ooh, I know, that's a lot of lumber, huh? <laughs> but it takes a lot to make this stuff. Okay, so, all right, before we get started, we got a whole bunch of new patrons. And I gotta, I told you I'd read them off every time we shot a video, the new ones. So here we go. All right, so we got Jimbo's Gold Dredge Concentrates, uh, Bear Groom, Paul Drake, Gary Bass. You know who you are. You got some good looking gold out there, Gary. Uh, Larry Engelhart. Ooh, we used to go on some fun trips together, huh, Larry? Uh, I got Steve Mazzara. Ooh, I'll be seeing him tomorrow. And uh, Steve Newbanks. And I just want to say thanks for all your support out there. I gotta get these off. Whew. Cause I tell you what, without you guys, we could never do this stuff. <laughs> all right, come back in the drift here. I want to show you how this all goes together. Ah, all right, let's get all the way in the back here. Look at the working face. Ah, I know. It's hard on my old knees. Up here, I'm gonna turn this guy off. How's that? There, now you can see me real good. You're like, whoo hoo, turn it back on. Ha, <laughs> ha, I'm gonna teach you how to do brace sets or collars as they're called. We're gonna be lagging a set together today. That's what the old timers used to call it. All that lumber on my lumber cart, that's just for one set. Can you believe that? That is an awful lot of wood. Well, I gotta go over some of the basics with you first, okay? I got one collar here and I got one collar over here. The spread should not be more than five feet. When you're working in really soft ground, like clays and muds and sands and things like that, you might want to just make each collar set about two and a half feet because it'll increase the strength of this lagging. See that? See that blast hole? Yeah. If you're gonna be tunneling in something really soft, there's a technique that you use for that, and it's called using a boom. A boom basically is, is integrated into the collar braces. As it slides out, creates a level of protection to keep the back from sloughing off on top of you. I would use one of those if you're working in sand, soft dirt. All right, so what's the first step? Is I created one of these guys right here. All right, now this is the width at the bottom of one of my collar sets. Not only does it tell me how wide I need to be, but it also tells me uh, what angle that my wood's gonna be at my timber when I start to put it in. I'm gonna have a timber here, and I'm gonna have a timber here. See that? Size big. <laughs> You're gonna chisel out a pocket for your post to go in. If it's really solid rock or it's really solid caliche, which acts as a false bedrock, then you can rest your, your post right on top of it. If you're in sand or clay, you're gonna need one of these, a foot plate or a base plate. This creates a nice base for your post to sit on. You gotta make sure that you carve out enough room for the new set and the lagging that goes with it to fit. Instead of using a hammer and nails like the old timers did, I recommend getting one of these drills. And it's great for getting into those tight places. And you're gonna need that when you go to put your lagging on. Nothing smaller than a four by six down in these drifts. Six by six is great, eight by eight's even better. But that's usually getting up into your hard rock stuff. All right, so. Hey! I'm gonna take one of these guys. It's a little brace and it's gonna hold him in place. You wanna lose weight, be a gold miner. I got my brace right here and it's holding up my post. See that? I'm going to secure it with this guy right here. See that? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use a drill. To keep these guys centered the way they should be up against that last collar, you're going to use what's called lashing. So you're going to use some lashing to hold these new columns to the last set and that way they don't flop forward and backwards. So here we go. 
I got my lashing in. Now, just to make sure that I'm sitting right, I went ahead and put my cap on here. See that? See my cap? That my posts are sitting at the right angle. And now I can take my cap off and I can start working with my lagging. Ah. Now, remember when you're lagging that you're only going to use one nail or one wood screw. Don't put two because you won't be able to adjust that lagging. If you got any room between your post or your cap or your lagging, this is very important, you need to, to support it with something like blocking or backfill or something like that. You don't want any gap between your lagging or the top of your cap or the sides of your post. None. Because you want this whole thing wedged into place. And if the earth starts to shift or move, you want it tight in there so it doesn't have any, any room to, to move around. So if you have any gaps in here, you better block them up. And remember those wedges I told you about? Those miner's wedges? You probably have to make your own the hardwood ones. You're going to shove that in there and block it up nice and tight. If you're having trouble getting back here behind your lagging like I told you before, that's why I like these side braces down here because then I can just take the cap off, see that? And then I can move this brace down here and then I can move this whole wall in, see that? And by doing that, I have access to the back of it because there's gonna be times where you can't get back behind this lagging to fasten it. So see this, I can loosen this brace up, bring this forward, get my drill back there. So see, now I can push this back up, put my support there, and I'm good to go. It is the last step, which is to put the lagging on the back. And actually, there's nothing to hold the lagging on the back. You just slide it in place, and so that's all we're gonna do. That don't look too shabby, huh? Okay, now, the last step, or I should say the second to the last step, is the back, lagging for the back, and the collar braces. Now, I have a lot of people who are going to argue with me. They'll say, Jeff, put the collar braces in first and then put the lagging in for the back. No, I don't like doing that. It, I have more room and more clearance if I put the lagging in first and then I'll put the collar braces in last. And now, I've already measured and that's why I've got the lashing on here to keep everything in place. All I'm going to do is slide it forward like such and then bring it over here like that. See that? I can slide them all the way forward and get them in there. See that? That's why I dug that out. Because I knew I'd be putting these in. Now like I said, there's nothing holding them in. Um, no screws, no spikes, no nothing. They're just sitting in there. So what you need to do is if you got any gaps up there, you need to block it, you need to shim it, backfill it, something. You gotta make it nice and tight in there. There can't be no spaces in there, okay? And they just sit up in there nice and, nice and snug. See that? Where is somewhere? slide right up in there like that all right so when you put your collar brace in half of it's gonna be down here on the bottom of the post the other half is gonna be up here on the cap see that it holds these two pieces from moving around and then I'm gonna put a little square piece of wood here to keep it from shifting down Now in the old days I used to toenail this, but we're gonna put a screw in like a toenail. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Nice and straight compared to our lagging up here. I got him secure, I got him secure. And we're right up against the butt here of our spreader. Looks pretty good. Not too shabby, huh? <laughs> Woo, that's how you do it. Now, I gotta tell you, like I said, we're starting to go into a curve. And if you ever put a curve inside of your own drift mine or, or even your own backyard project, whatever it is you're doing, remember that these are the hardest to do when you start curving because a lot of the variables and the geometry, everything changes. 
and you better make sure all your cuts are right because everything might look right on paper but when you get down here everything's different so all right i'm gonna go ahead and take off my lashings here <laughs> Well, anyway, that's how you do it. I hope you enjoyed today's episode on how you timber a mine. Not a lot of people talk about it, obviously, because it's hard work and it's a it's a dying art form. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And if you have, please rate, share, and subscribe. And if you really want to help me and Slim out, you can be a super subscriber by clicking on the link at the end and being a patron. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams. With that Jeff Williams, that car! Say, do you want to do a little drift mining? And you want to have some fun? Well, just watch all my videos and you'll get her done. Ooh. So come on, let's go!